Hey everybody, this is Maxim Bergerak from 100 Things to Do with Red Hat Management Products. Um, it's been a while, apologies for that. Um, today we're going to talk about um, using Virtu for virtual data center subscription management. Um, I've had quite a few people asking me to do a short video about how to set up Virtu and some related topics. So that is what we're going to do this week and um, the weeks after this one, um, we're going to um, go a little deeper into things like um, activation key management and things like that. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, here it goes. So the first thing we need to do is define what a virtual data center subscription is. A virtual data center subscription or VDC allows you to run an unlimited amount of guests on a single hypervisor. And we support Red Hat virtualization, Red Hat OpenStack, VMware ESX, and Microsoft Hyper-V for that. Each hypervisor in your cluster that you want to run an unlimited amount of RHEL VMs on requires its own virtual data center subscription. So for a cluster of 10 Rev hypervisor nodes, you need 10 VDC subscriptions. Then each a uh, hypervisor that you attach a virtual data center subscription to gets its own derived SKU. And this is what you see here below. What you see is that I have attached one virtual data center subscription to a physical machine, which is my hypervisor. And the moment I attached the VDC subscription to this um, physical machine, this second subscription was automatically created for me, which is an unlimited amount of guests for one specific hypervisor. And I'll show you in the Satellite 6 interface how this looks later on. Now, the next thing we need to do is tell Satellite where those derived SKUs live, what hypervisors all my virtual machines are running on. And that is where Virtu comes in. Uh, Virtu is a process that you can run on your capsule or Satellite if you want, or on a dedicated virtual machine, that is fine as well, that maps each virtual machine to a hypervisor and Satellite can then attach the right derived SKU to it. All configuration for virtu lives in a directory under slash etc called uh, virt-who.d. Um, and um, you probably already recognize the format of that directory name. You can put multiple configuration files in there. So you can use one virtu instance to talk to both your rev cluster and your OpenStack cluster, for example. And we actually have some help um, at, at the, on the Red Hat customer portal to help you figure out how to set up for it who. And um, I'll show you that interface right now. So there we are again. Um, as you can see, this is a, a fairly self-explanatory wizard-like for who configuration file generator on the Red Hat customer portal. You just fill in all the information boxes that we um, that we give you. And at the end, it will give you either the opportunity to copy paste the contents of a Virtu configuration file and put it onto your system or basically download it directly uh, by clicking a link. Uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to uh, spend a huge amount of time going through this. It takes a couple of minutes and um, I'm pretty sure you can figure this out by yourselves. So I already did this. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what my configuration looks like. So, so let's switch over to, uh, to a terminal. So there we are. We are now on my Satellite 6 system from where I'm going to run for 2 um, In the um, FERT2.d directory under slash etc, you can see I have a revm.conf uh, configuration file. In that configuration file, you see everything I have copy pasted from the configuration helper on the Red Hat customer portal. Um, there's one thing I want to point out here, and that is uh, these um, password strings. Um, basically, Virtu ships with a password encryption utility that you can use to uh, spit out um, encrypted versions of your passwords to make your um, configuration file a little bit more secure. Uh, you just run it. You enter the password you want to run. Uh, you want to use, for example, to uh, log into the Satellite Web interface, and um, it spits out a string you can use in the configuration file. So we're going to switch over to the satellite interface right now to uh, show you that there are no hypervisors available right there uh, at this point. And then we're going to run for two and see what happens. So this is my satellite web interface. You can see that I do have two ref hosts here, ref host one, ref host two. But those are the objects I actually use to manage those ref hosts. Those are not the places, um, not the, the hypervisors as they are reported in through for two. And you'll see those pop up in a minute. So we're back at the shell 
uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to run for two, point it to my ref config, and we cannot tell it to run just once. We're going to pass dash O, which means one shot, and then um, we're going to just hit enter. So it's now going to use my ref m dot deployment six dot land configuration. It's sending an update to the host to guests mapping for that configuration to my satellite server. It has found two hypervisors and one guest. That all looks pretty good. So let's switch back to the satellite server and see what changed. So there we are back in the satellite interface. Now I'm going to hit search and if everything is okay, and it is, uh, we should now see two nodes, two extra nodes popping up for two rev node one and for two rev node two. These are the nodes as they are reported in by for two. And these are the nodes I'm going to attach my VDCs to. So I'm going to go to content hosts. I'm going to select both of these for two reported hypervisors. I'm going to click bulk actions, go to the subscriptions tab over here, and I'm going to find the right subscription to attach to them. Now I'm going to pick um, the RHEL for virtual data centers standard subscription today. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to add those to my two new hypervisors. And as this is done, uh, they're both both equipped with um, virtual data center subscriptions right now. So back to the list of uh, content hosts real quick. If I click one of those two new uh, virtual ref one node objects, I can on the subscriptions tab see that I have really attached one of those virtual data center subscriptions. And if I go to um, Red Hat subscriptions here in the top menu, what I'll be able to see is the derived SKUs as they have been created for these um, for these two hypervisors. And there they are. We can see that there are now two of the 30 available um, virtual data center subscriptions attached to um, physical machines, the for two RevNote 1 and RevNote 2 machines. And the two derived SKUs have been created for guests of RevNote 1 and RevNote 2. So to finish this off, because the video is starting to become a little bit long, uh, let's go to the all hosts page. Let's take a look at the test ref2 machine I have here, which is a test machine I have running without any entitlements attached to it. Let's fix this. Let's go to content. Um, we can see that it has been reported before. I have manually removed the subscription to, uh, to do the demo. I can go to the subscriptions tab. And now I can run, because you can see there are no subscriptions attached to the system, I can run auto-attach. Auto-attach will then say, hey, everything is OK now. I can refresh this page. And what we will see is that instead of the red bubble we saw next to the test ref2 machine before, there is now a green one. And there's a green one because um, we actually have a subscription attached to it now. We can go to the subscription page. And we can see that one of our derived SKUs, specifically the one for uh, for to Rev Node One, has been attached to the system. And um, as as a funny thing, I can I can quickly go into my my Rev console and migrate the system away. You cannot see this, um, but I can migrate the system away to the other Rev Node in my in my lab. And if I then uh, kick for two in the background, we can actually see that it will start using the other. Um, derivative SKU for for two Rev Node two, so you can actually you have free floating VMs over your whole cluster. Everything will work as you expect it to uh, to work, and um, the 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 derivative SKU will just be used from the hypervisor your system is running on at, at uh, any single moment in time. So let me check if my uh, migration is already done on Rev. Yeah, migration is done. So let me kick for two real quick. But who restart? There we go. We can, uh, as you can see now, it is running on node one, or at least it's using the um, derived SKU from node one. Let's refresh this page. Let's click test route node two. There's now node two, and it is also using the subscription for node two. So that is what Vert Who can do for you. It can make your life actually pretty easy. So let's switch back to my presentation for a final closing. So switching back to the presentation, um, some final things to keep in mind. Um, satellite and Vert who will not attach virtual data center subscriptions to hypervisors that are detected. You have to do that yourself. As you empty hypervisors, Satellite and Vert who will not remove virtual data center subscriptions from those hypervisors either. Those two steps you have to take manually. Um, we will look at attaching 
um, the derived SKUs through activation keys and um, other um, subscriptions through activation keys in later videos. So stay tuned for that. And uh, that was it for me for this uh, for this video. I understand it was a little bit long, but it's also a lot to explain. So I hope you still enjoyed it. Please let me know if you did or did not enjoy it. If you have any ideas for videos in the future, let me know as well. Um, if you like the whole channel, please subscribe. Uh, it keeps me motivated. And um, for now, um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Um,